This is going to be verse by verse of 2 John. And we're going to look at the subject of Jesus is come in the flesh. Revelation 1.8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, is Alpha and Omega. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. You can't limit him to time. He's always been in existence. He was. He presently is, and he is coming. So Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So why is Jesus Christ come? Number one, to show us the truth. Second John 1, 1 and 2. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also... All they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. So John says he loves them in the truth. So he loves them in the Lord Jesus, because Jesus said himself in John fourteen six, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if they love, if John loves them, her in the truth, then he loves her in the Lord Jesus. So the elder and to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, a good sign you're saved is since the truth, the Lord Jesus Christ dwells in you, then you will love other Christians which also have the truth in them. So Jesus is come in the flesh, and he dwells in me. In 2 John 1, 2, it says, For truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. So Jesus Christ is the eternal God that left the riches of heaven, came down to live a sinless life, and Jesus is come. Because the moment I believed on him, he moved into my body and made it the temple of the Holy Ghost. The truth dwells in us and shall be with us forever. And if we read this book, we hide it in our heart. So Jesus is come in the flesh. And he is God manifest in the flesh. You must believe that as a Christian. You must believe that Jesus Christ is God manifested in the flesh. 2 John 1, 3, Grace be with you, mercy and peace, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. So, grace is God giving you something you don't deserve. Mercy is God keeping you from something you do deserve. And peace is something you get at salvation. And that is peace with God. And then after salvation, you get the peace of God through fellowship with Him. But notice John said, Jesus Christ is the Son of the Father. Now this makes him equal with God. In John 5, 18, it says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. So Jesus is equal with God. He is God in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16, one of the greatest verses in the Bible, if not the best, on the deity, the Godhood of the Lord Jesus. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. And again in Philippians 2, 5, and 6, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Titus 2, 13, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Titus 2, 13, called him the great God. So Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, and he is God manifested in flesh. And Jesus is come in the flesh to show us how to walk. In Second John 4, 
It says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. So he's rejoicing because saints aren't just naming the name of Christ, but they are departing from iniquity. They are walking in truth. And I believe salvation is by grace through faith without works. But if you're going to tell people that you're saved, then you need to show people you walk the walk and not just talk the talk. There's a lot of people that do that. John said he found them walking in truth. Whether you're walking in the flesh and doing wicked things or walking in the spirit and serving God, you're going to be found by somebody. John found them walking in truth. If John showed up right now, how would he find you? Walking in the flesh or walking in truth? You're going to be found by somebody doing what you're doing and it will make or break your testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh to show us how to walk. He leaves the light on. He'll show you how. In 1 John 1, 6 and 7, it says, If we say that we have no fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us of sin. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 23, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. So he left us an example that we should follow his steps. And the Apostle Paul is also a pattern of how to walk. The psalmist said, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Just open this book and the Lord will show you how to walk. In the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. If you just open this book and read it, it'll show you how to walk godly. It'll show you how to walk in holiness instead of walking in the flesh. But Jesus Christ is come in the flesh so you could see how to walk. Second John 5, Now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. If you love the Lord and love others, then you'll have no problem walking in the light. Because if you love your brother, you won't take his wife and commit adultery. If you love your neighbor, you won't steal his things. If you love your neighbor, you won't cheat him. If you love the women around you in the workplace and in church, then you won't fornicate with them. Notice John told this elect lady that he loves her in the Lord. That's the professional Christian like way for a Christian man to talk to a Christian woman. There won't be much flirting going on if you say, I love you in the Lord. But John isn't giving a new commandment. It's that same great commandment. Love your neighbor. And it says in Romans 13, 9, For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you're not going to commit adultery with his wife. You're not going to kill him. You're not going to steal from him. You're not going to lie against him. You're not going to covet what he has. You're not going to rob his house and or vandalize his store. All these people running around like a bunch of idiots vandalizing. 
they don't love their neighbor as their self. They don't love their race as they love their self. They love their self. And that's why they act like heathen. So love your neighbor and love the Lord. And you'll see your sin decrease. If you look at 1 John 2 and verse 7 through 11... It says, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Wouldn't you say that the people you're seeing on TV today doing all these crazy things and acting like idiots, wouldn't you say they're walking in darkness by the way they're treating other people, other people's property, all because they supposedly care about their race and that's just nonsense you don't treat other people wrong just because someone did one person wrong or some other people wrong you can't take your anger out on someone else if you walk in the light you'll love your neighbor as yourself instead of being a lover of your own self instead of being a lover of pleasure more than a lover of God, why don't you start worrying about what God wants and what other people want besides yourself? Second John in verse 6, And this is love, that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So if you love the Lord like you should, then you'll take this book seriously and you'll try to follow every command. <clears throat> and there are commands all through this book. But next, Jesus is coming in the flesh to expose deceivers. If you look at 2 John 7, it says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. So the real Jesus Christ showed up and made his word available so that when a false Christ shows up or the Hollywood false Christ is preached, then you'll know it's not the real Jesus Christ. Any man who says Jesus Christ isn't come in the flesh, he, he, if he's saying that Jesus is not the Son of God, that he's not God in the flesh, he's a deceiver in any Christ. He's the opposite of Christ. He's resisting Jesus Christ. 1 John 4, 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of any Christ, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. So anyone who denies that Jesus Christ is virgin born, God in the flesh, sinless, shed his blood, was buried and resurrected, is an antichrist. And they would have the wrong gospel. They would have the wrong Jesus. Notice John said many deceivers are entered into the world. This is a present evil world. We should not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. So Jesus Christ has come in the world to shine the light on the deceivers. If Jesus isn't come, then you wouldn't have anything to compare the deceivers to. If he hadn't preserved his word, then you wouldn't have a book to expose the error with. And 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen says, For there must, also, there must be also heresies among you. So there's going to be heresies among you, but you've got the Lord Jesus Christ shining the light on those heresies. When you see Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Charismatics, Church of Christ, Seventh-day Adventists, Catholics, Buddhists, Muslims, Scientologists come at you denying the doctrines of Christ, and then you just open the book that exposes their Antichrist doctrines. But Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh to also reward the faithful. 2 John 1 8 says, Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. 
The reason you get to get rewards is because Jesus Christ left the riches of heaven to walk in the likeness of sinful flesh, to be in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Then die on the cross, shedding his blood, and get resurrected. Now, you can be saved freely and then begin to work on earning rewards in heaven. But look to yourselves that you lose not those things which you have wrought, so that you receive a full reward. Someone might say, I don't care if I get rewards as long as I get to heaven. But that's foolish. What if you were at work and your house burned down with your family inside? You wouldn't say, it doesn't matter to me if my house burns down with everything I have inside as long as I get out alive. That's crazy. <clears throat> and saying that you don't care if you get any rewards at the judgment seat of Christ as long as you get to heaven is much crazier than that. But the judgment seat of Christ is going to be a fearful thing. Paul said, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So you need to want to get all you can at the judgment seat of Christ. You can lose rewards by compromising with the antichrists of this world. If these antichrists come your way that deny that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, then you need to rebu rebuke them, quote them, 1 Timothy 3.16. Now, 2 John 9, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. The doctrines of Christ are for one, are they for his virgin birth. If you look at Matthew one twenty three, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, God with us. Number two, the doctrines of Christ is his sinless life in the flesh. Hebrews 4.15 says, He was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Next, the doctrines of Christ is his deity, his Godhood, the fact that he is almighty God. As we said in Philippians 2.6, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Next, another one is, he shed his blood, was buried, and resurrected. You can read about that. That's the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And the fact that he shed his blood is in Colossians 1, 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, 2 John 10, If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. If someone comes around you, and doesn't believe in those major doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ, then don't tell them God bless you. Don't tell them you're praying for their ministry. Don't tell them you wish them the best. Don't tell, um, don't tell them anything like that. Tell them the gospel. And tell them if they don't believe that gospel, then they're going to burn in a lake of fire. Don't compromise and say that they are in the body of Christ, even though they deny the Son of God. Second John 11. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. That's how you'll lose a full reward, is to compromise with these wicked false teachers. Follow not a multitude to do evil. Evil communications corrupts good manners. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh so that you could get a full reward. And Jesus Christ has come in the flesh to take over. Jesus Christ was, he's always been in eternity. He left eternity to walk on earth and die for our sins. He is here in us, the believers, and he is come in the flesh to take over at the second coming. He was, he is, and is to come. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He's timeless. He can't be bound by time. He was back then. He is now, and he will come. He's everywhere at once. You go back to Genesis 1-1, and he's there. You go to the Psalms, he's there. You go to the Gospels, he's there. You go to Revelation, he's there. You go to eternity past, he's there. Eternity future, he's there. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You can't explain it, he just is. And that is why he is the I am. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh to take over. In Second John 12, Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink. But I trust to come unto you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. Notice that phrase, face to face. That has to do with the second coming, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes to take over and bring in the kingdom. 
1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So at the rapture, the first phase of the second coming, we will see him face to face. And our loved ones in the Lord will see face to face and believers around the world face to face. The same goes for when we come back down with him at the second coming to take over and bring in the kingdom. As you can read all about that in Revelation 19. And then Second John 13, the children of thy elect sister greet thee amen so this has just been a quick study a quick verse by verse study of the short book of second john